G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today in the lab we're having a look at an LED workshop light that's not charging. What could be the problem? Let's check it out together. Okay, so I've had this little LED light for quite some time and I've used it in the workshop and it's really good. The thing is that it has three phases to it or three sections, I guess. We've got one on, another one on, and then we've got a little torch on the end. So it's actually quite useful. Where did I get it from? Well, Audi. You know, I paid about 20 bucks for it. It's got a, a rechargeable battery in it as well. So I'd really like to rescue it apart from keeping it off the landfill, it's actually quite a good light, but it's just not charging. And as you saw, it's still working all right, but the battery's getting flat, of course, because it's not charging. It's actually charged by a little USB connection on the side here, and I do know what the problem is because this has been failing for some time. In here is a little red LED, well, depending if it's charged or not, red or green. And I used to have a little bit of a dicky problem here with this not connecting properly and I'd sort of wiggle it and wiggle it and eventually the light would come on. So the major problem is that this jack here has failed and I've bought some, I just need to replace the jack as far as I know. So let's pull it apart and make sure my diagnosis is correct. This is one of those jobs that I've been putting off for some time and I actually went out and bought another one of these and this has been sitting on my lab workbench for some time but I really need to get it up and running to have it as a spare because it's so helpful in the workshop to have several lights. Now, one of the clues for this uh, fault is actually uh, the old wigglage test, you know, a good visual and a, a good wiggle. And this fella here is just loose in its socket. I have actually tried squishing the jack a little bit and that worked for, a, you know, about a month or so, but now she's finally for schnookered. I really need to replace it. So I have gone ahead and um, got myself some little uh, jacks, etc. And so we'll solder them in place and hopefully uh, that should sort out the issue. Disassembly of the light itself is not that hard. There's only three screws in the back. One, two, and another fella right here. Um, and once you've done that, you can just peel this blue section off, get that out the road, and hopefully that should come up like a DOS. Okay, so that just sits there in place like that. Um, one thing to be aware of is that this may fall out. That little bloke right there, as you can see, there's a bit of a knobby bit and that fits into that hole and then that sits on top of the switch as such. So the main thing I'm going to be focusing on today is this little jack here. And as I said, I have had a few attempts at it and I've sort of been dreading um, unsoldering it because it's a, a surface mount one. There goes half the light. It's a surface mount one and it can be quite difficult to, to work on. But I have in the lab now, which has been sitting in my trolley for a little while, um, but I haven't really paid attention to it. So it's solder paste. I'm going to give it a shot today and just see how it goes on that jack because I do have more complex work to do with little tiny ICs that I want to use this as a practice run and uh, get a feel for it anyway. So let's uh, pull this uh, circuit board apart and have a look at that jack and see if this stuff is as good as uh, people say. Not sure how clear this is going to be for you guys, but here's the jack that we need to replace. Now, if we flip it over, it's really no big deal. It just basically has four mounting points. Now, I'm not concerned about the mounting points. They're not hard to do, but let's have a look at the actual connections themselves. They're hidden in behind this switch and they can be quite difficult to get to. There's four little pins along here um, that need to be soldered into place and it's actually quite difficult to get to with a soldering iron. So I thought, uh, ideally, a bit of solder paste, we can chuck it on there and give it a shot, see what happens. I have been using this rework station that I bought some time ago. It has a good soldering iron in it as well as a hot air gun, which is uh, actually quite useful, but in this case, I might have to use something different. Because of the position of this jack and the anchor points, I can't really get the solder out just using a normal wick. So what I'm going to use is a solder sucker. Um, one that I purchased uh, a little while ago, I haven't used it too much, is this one. It's a cheaper brand, let's face it. It's an ST-2091 and it does the job quite nicely though. So let's see if that works 
on my issue here trying to get the anchor points off that jack. These are the two points here and here that I want to get off and I'll use my solder sucker. We'll give it a shot, see how we go. Hopefully it's up to temperature. Yes, it is. Just wiggle him around, get some heat into it. Try this one here. Actually didn't get it out too bad. Still not quite right. Still can't get that little jack off. So uh, I might have to heat it up and just try and wedge it out the back there with a little tiny screwdriver or something because it just doesn't want to come out at the moment. I'll just gently lever it down if I can. Oh, look at that. We've got part of it off at least. So this anchor point over here is still giving me the griefage, but we shall in fact just put a little more tension on it. It should lever off now. Now the other side's out. Look at that, beautiful. Looks like it's got some of that red glue that holds it in place during uh, the flow system uh, when they do the circuit boards. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. It appears that it's pulled off one of the pads, bit of a pain. I might see if I can just put an extra wire down there and then sit the jack on top. I'm gonna to put in some wire, but the only wire that I have small is 0.1 of a millimeter. Now that would be too small to hold current, I believe. So all I've done is just twist it and twist it and twist it um, into a, a reasonable size bit, I suppose. And that should in fact fit just across here. Now I've scratched the circuit board, as you can see just here, and um, that should be my uh, solder point. And I'll just leave a little leg out there. Then I can solder it onto my jack um, leg or terminal, whatever you want to call it. I have managed just to put in a little bit of wire there, as you can see. Um, seems to be okay. It's nice and solid and I've made sure that it's clear. It's actually the positive going into the switch um, or the charging circuit, I should say. And the other little one, I only needed two, to be quite honest. The other little fella over here, I think it is, can't quite see in the camera, um, is the negative side of things. It's actually the, the whole pad um, that goes onto that one there. So yeah, as long as uh, I have contact here and here, this centre one isn't used, um, it should be okay. And then I can put the anchor points down, hopefully, and make it successful. After much ado, I've got the little jack into place and I've soldered the back of it with uh, actual normal solder. And I've just put some um, solder paste on the back there. As you can see, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, guys, it's really a bit of a hard spot to get to but I'm hoping that this solder paste will make it easier for me. I'm just gonna heat that up and see how we go. All right, let's give it a burl, see how we go. It's a little bit hard to get to the back of it. Like I said, there's a switch in the road there. Um, hopefully this should melt shortly. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll uh, have a look at that and see if it's done anything. Well, that certainly took a lot longer than I had expected. And the problem was, of course, this little track that got torn when I pulled off the old jack. But I have now uh, put some extra solder in there and it's, it's doing its job. I've checked that I've got good continuity between my earth, the actual frame of the, uh, the jack itself. And I'll show you what I used to test for the uh, positive side of things um, to make sure that I had good continuity. Pretty hard to get in there with a multimeter lead. So I'll show you what I used. I found these quite useful. They're a USB uh, female in this case, and this one over here is a male, but they just have the uh, positive and negative off it. So you can find your five volts that's coming into it. And um, you know, it's a lot easier than sort of probing in those little tiny terminals there. You can just get your positive and your negative here. Just using my normal USB connector that goes into this uh, LED light, the charging port. Um, you just shove that into there, around the right way, of course, dopey. It was the right way, there we go. And then you stick that into your charging port. And in this case, it should go that way. Yes, I believe so. We're in, yes. And now I can check for continuity between, let's say my um, negative side of things. Let's have a look, we'll put it onto ohms there. And of course we know that the, the actual body um, of the uh, jack is earth but also there's a little earth pad over here that I can uh, check on. So I'm just gonna connect those two together there. And over here, I'll just touch that little pad 
and I should get a, a full continuity reading there, which I am, aren't I? Okay, so for the positive side of things, all I want to do is see if I can get across to here. Now, uh, if there was a short, that would go down to zero or close to, and in this case we've got, uh, there should be mega ohms or something similar to that. There we go, perfect. And now I'm going to check the positive side of things. So I just put my uh, lead onto the positive uh, connector there. Uh, come on, get him on there. And he's on there. And now I just want to check and make sure that I've got continuity through that jack. I might just zoom in there for you. So you can see this little trace here that I put on. Um, that's where I want to test and I can test it there and make sure that I've got good continuity. And in this case I have, you can't quite see my multimeter, let's slide him up there for you and I'll just show you the test point that I'm doing. So onto that little trace that I just soldered onto there and we go across at our multimeter and we can see that we've got good continuity. So I feel safe that I should be able to power this up now and um, see that it's actually working correctly. Now at the moment I don't have the battery connected, I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm just going to hook that up to a power supply uh, to give me my 5 volts into there. So let's see what happens when we do that. There we go, have a look at that. Our little red, our green light of course, we have no battery. So let's connect the battery and make sure the charging circuit is working correctly. I'd imagine that we're going to get a little red LED here when I hook it up. This battery is quite low I'd imagine, but hey it's been Oh, I'd say well over a year since I've charged this battery and as you saw the light was working you know it wasn't overly flash but the light was working so there was voltage in this battery so that's why I thought well I'll do this repair because it's worth fixing because it's got a good battery in it so let's uh, see what happens when we hook it up to our little 5 volt uh, outlet there okay little red LED can you see that I hope you can see that there we go little red LED. We'll leave that on and of course once this is charged it should turn green. And there you have it, sometime later it's turned green. We know that the circuit is now charged. We can now put it back together with confidence knowing that that solder joint or that little jack has been changed and the solder joints that I've made there are permanent. So let's put it back together and put it back in service in the workshop. <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't help myself there guys. This is fantastic. It's great to get this little light up and running once again. I've missed it in the workshop. All for the sake of this little tiny charging jack that I've replaced. I hope you got something from this video today guys and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below of course. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.